Welcome to our lesson on the properties of ionic and covalent compounds. As you might have guessed, in this lesson we're going to be comparing and contrasting some of the general physical properties of both ionic compounds and covalent compounds. So let's look at some of those properties. We'll have ionic on this side, and we'll compare them to covalent properties on this side. Many of these properties we're going to be looking at are basically guidelines. Again, there's always going to be exceptions uh, when some compounds don't have particular properties. They don't have to have all of the properties, uh, but this is a general idea of the properties ionic compounds have versus the properties covalent compounds have. So let's start with ionic compounds. As we saw in a previous video, ionic compounds form crystals. That's pretty much a guarantee. They're always going to form crystals because of the nature of the way positive and negative charges line up. Related to that idea of all those positive and negative charges creating a very strong structure, they have very high melting points and high boiling points. What does that mean? Well, it means that they're pretty much always going to be a solid because it takes a very high temperature for them to melt and even higher one for them to boil. Their strong structure also makes them very hard, but at the same time, brittle. They're going to shatter very easily if enough force is applied. Um, they can't be bent or deformed, but they can shatter. Ionic compounds are usually soluble, meaning they can dissolve, in water. And the last one that's a really big giveaway for ionic compounds uh, is that when ionic compounds are dissolved, or if they're molten, meaning they were melted, they're in a liquid state, they conduct electricity. Now, anything that conducts electricity when it's dissolved is called an electrolyte. So ionic compounds are electrolytes. When they are put in water, the ions separate from each other, and they become free-moving ions, which allows electricity to be conducted in the liquid. So ionic compounds are electrolytes, substances that dissolve in water and then conduct electricity. They do not conduct electricity when they are in the crystal solid form. These are the key properties of ionic compounds that are frequently used to identify them. A lot of the covalent properties are going to look like uh, mirrors of the ionic ones in terms of just being opposites. So whereas ionic is almost always a solid crystal, covalent can be solid, liquid, or gas. They have relatively lower uh, melting points and boiling points uh, than ionic compounds. They're also not good conductors. They're poor conductors. They either don't conduct electricity or heat at all, um, or it's just not a very good job of it. Poor conductors. Uh, they typically don't dissolve in water, uh, don't usually dissolve in water, which also means that they're not electrolytes. Uh, and the last one is that they are very frequently flammable. Okay, that's a big giveaway for covalent compounds. Ionic compounds are really never flammable, but covalent compounds are often flammable. That wraps up our comparison of properties for ionic and covalent compounds. Any questions you have, make sure you write them down in your notes and bring them with you to class.